Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, day four of my nightfall project. So this is day four, working on my new design, the Nightfall, which is this knife right here. But uh, one thing worth mentioning here is that most of the stuff that I've been concentrating on in the first few days has been over on my new CNC machine. Uh, and a lot of people who you know, are casual fans of knives assume that if you're using a CNC machine, it just is taking all the handwork out of it. Not at all the, the case. This right here is an in-process version of my ZP01, which I, sh I say mine, but it's really the, the main work of this design was done by some buddies of mine, Zach Touchstone and Peter Renwick. Anyway, the point is that this knife right here, I once actually counted how many operations there were in it. There are about six or seven CNC operations in this knife, and uh, the total number of operations, I actually counted each and every little thing that I did to make this knife was 52 different operations. So what that means is the CNC does, you know, what is that? About 10% of the work. Um, so it's an important 10%, but you still have a ton of other stuff. So today we're gonna to be working on the nightfall, doing some of that other stuff. Specifically, that machine right back there, my heat treating oven will be used to heat treat, that is to harden the uh, nightfalls that we've been working on for the last few days. All right, let's get to it. So if you're a hobbyist knife maker, and that's of course the way I started out, you probably get your micarta knife scales or even wood or whatever in sizes about like this. If, on the other hand, you're making more production type stuff, uh, you're getting it more like this right here. So uh, sometimes even people might get it in four by eight foot sheets or whatever. Anyway, bottom line is I got all these sheets that will ultimately be turned into knife scales like this. And the intermediate step is that they will come out in sheets like this. So in order to get from this to this, I gotta get to this right here. And these are all made to pop right out. Uh, I won't do that now, but anyway, uh, the point is, I gotta cut these down now. So by the time the cheesy synthesizer music stops playing, I've cut up like 30 or 40 of these rectangles of micarta, which are specifically sized for a particular fixture on my mill. They all get bolted down, so you have to have the holes for the bolts. Nine bolts per sheet means nine holes per sheet, so that's about 300 holes that have to be drilled on yet another fixture on my Tormach. These go pretty quick, so I have to stand here getting ready to load the next blank while the Tormach cranks out piles of stinky dust. If you're enjoying this video or the other knife making videos that I've been making for the past 14 years, yes, that's right, please help this channel by supporting us on Patreon. 
you know, all these nifty cameras and lights and stuff cost money, and the time that I spend on this video does not begin to be covered by the tiny amount of dough that I get from, you know, ads on YouTube. The more support I get, the more videos that I can put out, the more help I can give you guys. As a way of saying thanks for your support, I make plans for most of my builds available to my subscribers on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Walter Sorrels. always try to label stuff in my shop it's real easy to buy stock of all kinds of stuff then stick it somewhere and by the time you use it a year two ten later you don't remember exactly what it is some of this is canvas micarta and some is linen some's quarter inch and some is three sixteenths once I've got a big old giant pile of these things done it's over to the Haas to start making handles for the nightfall I've already made a few of these on the Tormach, but I want to run them reasonably slowly on the Haas just to make sure I don't do something stupid. I'm sure everything's going okay, I can get started on the heat treating, which is where the steel gets hardened to something you could actually use as a cutting tool. For those of you who watched day three, you saw me get all the blades in this batch folded up in heat treating foil. You have to basically shut the steel up in a little stainless steel envelope to keep it from being exposed to air during the hardening process. The blades will sit there for around half an hour at over 1900 degrees. If you let them just bathe in oxygen the whole time, it sucks carbon out, it forms pits and scale and all kinds of stuff that you don't want. So the more you can protect them from oxygen, the better off you are. I've also got some scabbard chisels in the works. Just finishing them up with a little water-based varnish for the handles. I forged these a month or so ago, and I'm just getting around to getting them ready for sale. These are pretty much the exact opposite of the way I make nightfalls. Totally hand forged, hand ground, every one different from the next, kind of rustic, scale visible, all that sort of thing. You know, I'm not a bigot about the best method for making stuff. Some things seem to lend themselves to handwork, forging, all that stuff. Some not. These are incredibly useful tools, by the way. Actually, they're critical for making Japanese sword scabbards and handles. I make a batch of these every now and then and sell them on my waltersorrelsblades.com website. If you're thinking about making a Japanese sword scabbard or redoing a handle on a sword or something, you got to have one of these things. So then it's back to the Haas, which continues to do a great job on the handles. I'm making these from linen micarta. The first batch I did was G10, which is virtually indestructible, but a little less visually interesting than linen micarta. For those of you not familiar, they're both phenolic resin laminates, but G10 is made from glass fiber, whereas linen is made from, uh, yeah, linen. Once these handle scales are all finished, they have to be carefully cut out so you don't rip chunks of the material from the bottom of the scales. Then I have to grind the tabs off, and then there's a little more processing after that. But that's a story for another day. Well, so pretty successful day. Got one of these done. Um, this is the first one that I've done on here. I've, did a whole raft of them over on the Tormach, but this is the first one that I've done here. Looks great, 
pretty happy with it. These are micarta. I'll be doing some G10 ones too. So I'll have the opportunity to kind of evaluate how I like the G10 versus the micarta for this particular design. All right, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years, so I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.